Good evening, everyone. I'm calling Arlington's annual town meeting session nine to order on Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Um, let's close the uh, attendance check-in at this point. Again, this is ju just as uh, was announced earlier, this is just a test vote. Uh, we'll just uh, cycle through the screens here just to make sure that your vote did get registered if you think that you voted. And then after we've cycled through these screens for the test vote, we will move on to the Star Spangled Banner. Before we get started with the business of the meeting, I have some quick remarks. Uh, we have seven articles until we start zoning articles. Uh, then there are 15 zoning articles. And lastly, we have five resolutions. Uh, so there's still a considerable amount of business uh, ahead of us. Uh, I sent a letter to town meeting members this week to the town meeting member email list this weekend clarifying how I intend to handle notices of reconsideration since there was considerable interest in uh, reconsideration on, um, on a handful of articles. Given the limited time in which we can deliberate articles and the constraint that annual town meeting cannot be dissolved until all articles are disposed of, I will entertain motions to reconsider only after we have disposed of all 77 articles in the annual town meeting warrant. This will help ensure that every article in the warrant has time to be heard while allowing for a small number of articles to be reconsidered if time permits. I ask that those seeking to move reconsideration uh, consult with me in advance. Uh, next, uh, the swearing in of new town meeting members. Uh, if any town meeting members uh, have been newly elected or appointed and have not been have not yet taken the oath of office, please contact the town clerk, Julie Brazil, uh, about doing so uh, as soon as you can. Uh, I now recognize uh, the chair of the select board, uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. It is moved that if all business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, then when meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, May 25th, 2022 at 8 p.m. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Diggins uh, for Wednesday. Second. On Wednesday, and we have a second. Um, yes, yeah, second. Second from Mr. Foster. Yep, thank you. And uh, if let's get raised hands enabled in Zoom. And if there are any objections to uh, reconvening uh, after this meeting tonight adjourns, uh, reconvening on Wednesday, May 25th at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, raise your hand uh, in Zoom now to register your objection. And seeing none, uh, the motion passes and we will reconvene on Wednesday if we don't finish uh, our business tonight. Uh, now call for uh, any announcements or resolutions. Uh, you can raise your hand in Zoom if you have announcements or resolutions. Uh, yes, Mr. Marr. Let's bring him up. 
Uh, John Martin, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the Sims Medical Use Nonprofit Corporation is an entity established pursuant to the voluntary dissolution of the Sims Health Services Incorporated, which was operated the Sims Arlington Hospital. Certain provisions of the dissolution agreement established by the Supreme Judicial Court of the Commonwealth set aside funds remaining for the hospital dissolution to be administered by the corporation. The board of directors, which is appointed by the manager subject to the approval of the selectmen, uh, will be receiving uh, proposals for a grant or grants to nonprofit entities whose principal function is to provide health related services to the residents of the greater Arlington community. Over the years since 2001, we have given out approximately $1 million worth of grants. I have the privilege of serving currently as the chair along with uh, members uh, Jackie Kesh and, and Alan Reedy. The particulars of the grant sol uh, sol 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 solicitation will be in uh, this coming week's advocate and the following advocate, or you can reach out to me directly or and my contact information can be gotten from the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you, Mr. Mar. I think you had mentioned the uh, 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 contacting the selectmen. Uh, the updated term, just for everyone's benefit, is the uh, board, uh, the uh, the select board. Thank you. Uh, any other um, uh, announcements or resolutions? Okay, seeing none. Let's uh, uh, I now call for reports that are ready to be received. Uh, Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Frost. That Article Three be removed from the table. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Foskett to uh, remove uh, Article 3 from the table uh, so we can receive reports and a second from Ms. Brazil. Um, any objections? Raise hands in Zoom if you object to removing Article 3 from the table so we can receive reports. Seeing no objections, uh, we're now ready to receive reports. Uh, raise your hand in Zoom if you have a report to be received by town meeting. Okay, going once, going twice. Um, seeing none, uh, let's move on. Mr. Foskett. Mr. Moderator, uh, Charles, this precinct 10, I move that Article 3 be laid upon the table. Okay. Second. We have, we have a second uh, from Ms. Brazil for Mr. Foskett's motion to lay Article 3 upon the table so we can receive reports another time. Uh, raise, uh, raise your hands in Zoom if you have any objections to laying Article 3 on the table uh, so we can get back to Article 17, where we left off Monday night. I'm sorry, last Wednesday night. Um, Seeing no objections, um, Article 3 is now laid upon the table and Article 17 is now before us. So let's bring that up and we'll resume where we left off on Wednesday. Okay, so according to my notes, uh, we had a, uh, we had just started debate, I believe, and we had a motion uh, from Mr. Benson for a substitute uh, to the main motion and uh, I believe we had a second on that. Um, and, uh, and so let's now resume debate. Uh, so let's take up Mr. Wagner, please, next. Uh, name Thank you, Mr. Please. Moderator. Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can, go ahead, yep. Thank you. So uh, we're talking about Article 17, the uh, proposal to uh, end the ban on self-serve gas in Arlington for anybody who's just joining. Um, I should say that there is no one in Arlington who would like to have self-serve gas more than I. I know this because I was the town meeting member who proposed this exact change to get rid of the ban on self-serve gas in 2013, and the select board also supported it at that time. The proponents of this year's article did not contact me, but I would like to tell you what I learned about this proposal from what I proposed. The problem I discovered in doing my research is in the unintended consequences. By simply allowing self-serve without additional changes to our bylaw, we will end up hurting many of our constituents who told me back in 2013 that they don't mind people like me having self-serve, but they do not want to lose full serve. And as you can see in other communities, full serve would disappear entirely if we vote yes on the article without protections. Further questions that are not answered by the article are about the effect on station size and location uh, since Arlington is the second most dense town in our Commonwealth. There are also questions about noise and bother uh, that many of the self-serve pumps themselves could produce in self-serve only stations. 
I have also heard that the sort of mini marts that would be added to self-serve stations could hurt our existing shops and convenience stores, which are predominantly local businesses and not chain stores. Furthermore, I've seen recently and heard from some of the businesses that operate currently as repair and gasoline selling stations that they are not all in alignment on wanting this. In fact, many of them are concerned that this will put them out of business. Back in 2013, after learning how much Arlington wants to keep full serve and the concerns about the needs for other station regulations to be implemented at the same time as my simple resolution to allow self-serve, I ultimately ended up having to ask the town meeting not to support my own article because of the unintended consequences that I learned about. I would welcome self-serve gas in Arlington now as then, but in a way that preserves full serve, is supported by our fuel selling and repair businesses and those who live and work here, and especially in the vicinity of these businesses. This article needs protections for full serve. It should cover size and changes of the large self-serve stations that might potentially move in. And since it does not, I cannot support it and I urge you to vote no on the article until we have better protections for the, the ones that do want to have full serve. Thank you. Great, right. thank you, Mr. Wagner. Uh, let's take Mr. Weinstein next. Name and precinct, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator Jordan Weinstein, uh, Precinct 21. I'm going to keep it very short. I'm also uh, going to be voting against this article. Um, I uh, also agree uh, with uh, uh, Carl that uh, there aren't enough protections uh, in place uh, to uh, address the unintended consequences that might result from passage of this. And, uh, but in particular, my uh, feeling about this is that Arlington, uh, in its wisdom in uh, keeping uh, full serve gas stations, also protects uh, and supports a lot of uh, jobs. Uh, so if we're interested in employment, I would urge you, and continued employment, I would urge you to vote against this because the likelihood of uh, stations uh, even uh, continuing to uh, supply full serve uh, services is very slim based on uh, what has been happening in surrounding communities that have eliminated uh, the mandate for full serve. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, uh, Mr. Weinstein. Um, apologies for the pronunciation, I'll get that right, yeah. I, um, uh, let's take uh, Mr. Mills next. Name and precinct, please. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I, 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 I missed Mr. Warden. That was not intentional. Um, uh, I, I think the JW from uh, Mr. Weinstein, I elided with Mr. Warden. So let's take up Mr. Warden next. Apologies about that. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Name the precinct, please. Uh, uh, John, John Worden, Precinct 8. <clears throat> um, all right. Ar article 17. Um, I, I, I also um, oppose the passage of this article, uh, but I, I will say that if the majority does want to have this, we cannot do it without some protections, uh, such as those uh, put forth in Mr. Um, uh, uh, Benson's amendment. Uh, and I, I also um, um, uh, empathize with the, the, the remarks Mr. Wagner just made about the people who work there. And I, I know that, you know, we talk about diversity and inclusion and all that good stuff. Most of the, most of the men uh, who do the gas pumping at our stations, from my experience, are, are immigrants. And, and we are providing with all the gas stations in Arlington, we are providing jobs for these folks. And then maybe they'll be able to graduate from, from pumping gas to fixing cars and so on and, and, uh, and be on, on their way to a, a, a some, somewhat better life. And, 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 and these are local people who, who you know, they, well, they depend on these jobs, obviously. Um, I would like to, um, so 
So I, I and a previous speaker uh, mentioned this issue, um, but I would like to um, um, uh, ask uh, ask a couple questions of the chairman of the select board, um, um, and uh, which is as follows: through you, Mr. Moderator, of course. Sure. Um, sure. And and the, the the first question is, and I I don't want my time to be timed out. So just just yes or no question. Uh, did uh, did you do any outreach? I mean, I've prefaced this by saying we used to have a newspaper in this town, so that would tell you, uh, tell everybody who read it, which used to be almost everybody, that um, that, that there was a, a an article coming up to do away with with uh, our present system of gasoline stations where where the employees do the pumping. Um, so I, I want to ask the, uh, the, the the chair the chairperson of the board of selectmen to you, Mr. Moderator, what kind, uh, what reach, outreach did you do to the other business owners uh, in Arlington um, who run uh, gas, gas stations? Okay, yeah, so uh, uh, Mr. Diggins, uh, what outreach did you do? Um, but there were kind of two different questions there, yes, no question, did you do outreach, but then also- Mr. Oh, Right, asked, yeah, yeah, quite so. Yeah. Okay, did you want to be the yes, no question? So Mr. Diggins, uh, can you answer? Was there uh, any outreach and what did you what, Was there any outreach uh, uh, on this article? In one word, none. None. Well, thank, th th thank you. That, uh, that, that, that certainly uh, says that, uh, so the other, the other gas station owners have no way of knowing that this stealth attack on their business is coming at them. Um, the, um, well, I, I don't think it necessarily follows, um, but like, yeah. All right. Yeah. Maybe they got it through the the, the, gate, the great fire. Well, yeah, I just want to point out like, the warrant is is publicly published. Right, but, right. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Moderator, I'm well aware as you are that when that warrant comes and that one advocate that people get, everybody immediately goes to it and says, "Aha! Here's something I'm really interested in." Uh, but my other question is, if the amendment, if the article is passed with the amendment, uh, and uh, someone. Uh, let's say some elderly grandmother pulls up in her old Buick or something and, and wants some gas, and the attendant says, hey, pump your own, Granny. Uh, what recourse will she have uh, to get someone to follow the rules of, of that are set forth in the, in the amendment? So uh, in the absence of Mr. Benson's substitute motion or in the presence? No, of no, in the absence, in the absence of Mr. Ben Benson's motion, she can walk home, I guess. Uh, in, in the, if Mr. Benson's motion were approved, uh, then she, uh, she has the right to have somebody pump her gas. But what, what if they refuse to do it? What's her recourse on the spot? In, in, right, in the, ab in the absence of the, the Benson substitute, right? That was your no. question. Or, or sorry, in, the, in the presence e of it? Either way, what, what, either. What, 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 what is her recourse? Suppose it's an elderly person, a disabled yep. person, uh, a young teenage girl out late at night, or something like that. They want their gas pumped, but the guy refused to do it. What are they supposed yeah. to do to get their rights under our law? Right. So, so since Mr. Benson's substitute motion does mention certain things like the Americans with Disabilities Act requirements, uh, let's um, uh, uh, let's bring up uh, Town Council, Mr. Heim. Can you answer uh, Mr. Warden's question? I guess in two parts. Um, what assurances individuals would have that they can get assistance uh, getting gas pumped? Uh, um, uh, with and without Mr. Benson's substitute motion. Good evening, Doug Heim, Town Council. I think the best answer to that is probably threefold. With respect to persons who uh, have disabilities, uh, Massachusetts and Office of Disability, a um, number of other uh, av avenues, uh, Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination, our own local human rights commission, uh, probably all have to varying degrees, some ability to receive complaints from a private business that refuses to uh, provide a reasonable accommodation. With respect to a more generalized uh, declination of service to somebody who's not within a protected class, it's probably a little bit more of a nuance to the situation. It would depend on whether or not the special permits uh, associated with most of these businesses, or I think all of these businesses, because they're all, um, specially permitted under a slightly different definition under the zoning bylaw. These, the zoning bylaw and this provision aren't necessarily synced up and meant to 
um, uh, to some degree, they harm, harm you with each other, but they're not necessarily meant to rely upon each other. So I think the, the, the two primary things would be uh, if it's based on a disability, uh, it would be there are some state uh, and federal offices mm -hmm. as well as locally. And then if it's not based on that, I guess the question would be whether or not there are conditions about that place in the special permit. Thank you. Mr. 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 Moderator, please, that's yes, not Mr. really an answer to my question. It's late at night, uh, the person wants gas. What, what can they do? Can, can they call the cops? Can they call Mr. Diggins at his home? Uh, right. I mean, and I think the saying that they can com complain to the, the to some commission tomorrow or next week, but they want gas right now. Tonight, it's dark, it's snowing. She doesn't okay. have enough gas to get home. What is okay. she supposed uh, to do? So, Mr. Warden, we, I'm sorry, we are at the seven minute mark. Um, uh, some of that time was my own confusion. Uh, I, I have to allow. So, uh, I believe Mr. Benson also may be able to answer about enforcement very briefly because we are over time now. Um, but again, part of that was, was my fault for uh, repeating a Where question. Yes. Uh, no. Mr. Benson, go ahead. Uh, Eugene Benson, Precinct 10. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. If my amendment passes, it gets added to the bylaws and the bylaws can be enforced as any other bylaw uh, is enforced. In this case, the police have the authority to enforce the bylaw. Now, whether they're going to come out and do something in the evening is, is up to them and what their priorities right. are. Okay, so I, th I think I think we'll we'll leave it there. And if folks have further questions, we can get more into the details. Uh, but I do want to uh, keep us uh, on time here. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Thank you, Mr. Benson, and thank you, uh, Mr. Hine. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Mills next. And while we're bringing up Mr. Mills, I'll just point out that you can read from Mr. Benson's substitute motion, uh, the proposed change that he makes uh, to, uh, to add section one, um, number three, uh, speaks to um, the, the, uh, the situation that's relevant to that uh, recent uh, discussion. Uh, Mr. Mills, uh, name and precinct, please. Let's see, are we able to get Mr. Mills connected? Uh, let's see, it appears that he is not here with us now. So let's take uh, Mr. Tosti next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Alan Tosti, Precinct 17. I move the previous question on all issues involved in this article. Okay, we uh, uh, have a motion to terminate debate uh, on the main motion and the substitute motion in this case. Um, so do we have a second? We have a second from uh, Mr. Hamlin. Uh, so let's take a vote now on uh, terminating debate uh, on article 17 and the substitute motion. Okay, so we're still voting in waves here, uh, in three waves. You might get a message that says your voting controls will be enabled in two more waves or in the next wave. So just uh, be patient while, uh, while we allow different waves of precincts to vote. Um, and if your wave is open already, uh, please vote as, as quickly as you can. And we're voting on whether to terminate debate on Article 17's main motion and substitute motion. And uh, so if you want to terminate debate, vote yes. If you want to continue debate, vote no. And um, if debate is terminated, then we will proceed to vote on Mr. Benson's substitute motion. And then after that, we will vote on the main motion, which may or may not be substituted at that point. Uh, but right now we're just voting on termination of debate. Okay, it's going pretty quickly. We already have about what, over 200 votes cast. Um, still have several outstanding votes. Uh, so try to get your votes in uh, as quickly as you can. All, all precincts uh, should be enabled for voting at this point. So let's just give another 15 seconds and then we'll close voting on termination of debate. 10 seconds. 
five seconds. And let's close voting on termination of debate. And this is a two thirds vote. And it passes. So 174 in the affirmative, 49 in the negative, uh, which exceeds the two thirds threshold. So we're not gonna wait for these screens. We're gonna go straight to voting now on Mr. Benson's amendment. Um, so we'll, we'll first open voting on that. And then with that open, uh, we can bring up the text of uh, Mr. Benson's substitute motion. Okay. And so if, um, it, again, we'll be voting in, in waves here. So if your wave is open, feel free to vote at any time. If you're waiting to vote, um, this we're showing here Mr. Benson's substitute motion. So this would replace the main motion. The main motion, just uh, to review, uh, strikes the Article 5 that you're seeing here. Uh, the main motion strikes Article 5 entirely, just removes it from the town bylaws. Mr. Benson's substitute motion instead rewrites Article 5 uh, according to what you're seeing here. The, the underlying sections are added by Mr. Benson's substitute motion. The strikeouts remove that text. And let's just scroll down to show all of that. So you can see sections one, the original sections one and two are stricken. And then there's uh, a new section one and a new section two. And so if you are in favor of Mr. Benson's substitute motion, replacing the main motion uh, to have these edits rather than striking the section uh, uh, or, or striking the, the, art, the article five from the, the bylaws entirely, uh, if you wanna substitute with what you're seeing here, uh, you'd vote yes in favor of Mr. Benson's substitute motion and if you wanna leave the main motion as is to just strike the entirety of Title V, Article V from the town bylaws, which is what the main motion does, if you wanna retain that, then you would vote no. Uh, so we have a point of order from Ms. Garber. Let's take that up and uh, name and precinct please and your point of order. Judith Garber, Precinct 4. I, I apologize. I really want to clarify what happens if this substitute motion passes versus what happens if it does not pass, because it's not an amendment, correct? Right. It's not an it's it's not a motion to amend, it's a motion to substitute. So uh, if this if sorry, if this is voted yes, then we still vote again on it. That's right. If 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 um if the if the current vote that's currently open, if if, if the outcome is that it passes uh, with a majority vote, then uh, the main motion will be replaced with the substitute motion that you see described here. And so then we all vote on it again. We then we vote on the substituted main motion as substituted by the Benson substitute motion. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Moderator. Yeah, and so it is very confusing. And so I'll just clarify, there's kind of three different states at play here. There's the current state in the bylaws, which has an Article 5 or Title 5, Article 5, um, which uh, discusses the or outlines the restrictions on uh, uh, pumping of gasoline uh, by any person other than an authorized attendant. Um, that's the current state of the town bylaws. Uh, if you vote yes on the substitute motion here, then if we scroll up for a little bit and show the actual edits, um, if voting yes here on Mr. Benson's substitute motion means that the text, the edits here become the main motion for Article 17. They supersede the original main motion for Article 17. The other piece is the current unsubstituted uh, main motion for Article 17, which just strikes the entirety of Title V, Article V without replacing it with anything. It just strikes it and just uh, uh, removes it without anything added in its place. So if you want to replace Title V, Article V with what you see here, then 
you would want to vote yes on the Benson substitute motion. If you do not want this to become the main motion, which we'll vote on next, then you would vote no. And then the main motion, if, if this substitute motion fails, then the main motion will continue to be to just strike the entirety of Title V, Article V and replace it with nothing. Okay, so we have plenty of votes in at this point. Um, let's just give folks another 15 seconds. It looks like we're just about done anyway. So 15 seconds before we close voting on the Benson substitute motion. Uh, 10 seconds. Five seconds, and this is just a majority vote on whether to substitute the main motion with Mr. Benson's substitute. And let's close voting on the, ben the, the Benson substitute motion. Okay, and the vote passes by 78%, 170, and we'll, we'll wait here to watch uh, through all the voting screens. Uh, 175 in the affirmative, nine in the negative. Um, the abstentions don't really figure into the uh, quantum of vote at all. Um, and so uh, with, so Mr. Benson's substitute motion passes. And so now Mr. Benson, so now the main motion uh, is uh, is now Mr. Benson's uh, uh, is the result of Mr. Benson's substitute motion. The main motion is substituted by Mr. Benson's substitute motion. So at this point, there's no longer an option to vote to remove uh, Title V, Article V from the bylaws. There's only an um, an option to either vote for the substituted main motion. Um, or to leave uh, and vote yes, or to uh, vote no and leave the, the bylaws as is. So let's bring up a vote now on uh, the main motion for Article 17. Okay, so voting is starting to open up, at least for some waves of precincts. And um, so now we're voting on the main motion for Article 17 as substituted uh, by Mr. Benson's substitute motion. So what we were just viewing last time, when on the last vote, uh, we were viewing the text of Mr. Benson's substitute motion. If you are in favor of those changes to the town bylaws in Title V, Article V, uh, vote yes. Uh, if you want to leave the town bylaws as is, um, unchanged in regard to Article 5 or, or uh, Title 5, Article 5, then vote no to leave them as is. Um, as is being the status quo of uh, that uh, only attendants or employees of a filling station are permitted to pump gasoline. Um, if you want that to continue to be the case, vote no on this main motion. Uh, if you want to change it uh, according to Mr. Benson's substitute motion, uh, then vote yes. Okay, we have about 220 votes in, uh, just a handful remaining. So let's just wait another 20 seconds till we close voting on the main motion as substituted, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds until we close voting. And let's close voting on the main motion as substituted by Mr. Benson's substitute motion. And the motion fails. Uh, this was a, a required a majority to pass, and it's 105 uh, in the affirmative, 119 in the negative. Um, and the motion fails. Okay, so we'll just wait for the screens to cycle through. So the bylaws will not be changed uh, in Title V, Article V. And then after these uh, screens 
uh, are, are done cycling through to the end, uh, we will take up uh, Article uh, 19. And we had already started Article 19 and uh, uh, several nights ago, and uh, it was laid upon the table as we took up the finance articles and we're now running back through it. And so we already had introduced Article 19. Uh, we, uh, Mr. Schlickman introduced his, uh, his substitute motion and we had a second from uh, Mr. Weinstein, and uh, I don't believe we'd actually started debate at that point. And it looks like we have a speaker queue that's been um, reconstituted uh, from when we were discussing this earlier. Um, just to summarize, since um, we kind of we um, stepped away from this in the middle of things, uh, the, this is a this was originally Article 19 was originally on the consent agenda. It was pulled off by Mr. Slickman. Uh, who has offered a substitute motion um, uh, to uh, name the unnamed public way located between 49 Spring Street and Route 2 uh, Frontage Road as Magliozzi Boulevard. Uh, so that's Mr. Slickman's substitute motion. Um, and so let's resume uh, debate here. Let's take up Mr. Rudiman first. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. Uh, Mr. Schlickman has uh, uh, introduced the matter. I'll say a few words about, about the, uh, you know, the, the, for the principal uh, concept and then, for the, uh, and, and then for the rationale. Uh, Tom and Ray Maliazzi, known to fans of public radio around the country as Click and Clack the Tappet Brothers, invented a form of radio entertainment. They were invited by a producer at WBUR to come in one day and answer questions from the public with other auto mechanics on matters of auto repair. It happened to be they were the only ones who showed up, but they were so engaging and so humorous, so personable, so friendly and inviting to their audience, they were invited back. 10 years, they were invited back on WBUR to handle questions from the public. After 10 years on WBUR, the program was syndicated. For another 25 years, WBUR sold this program to public radio stations around the country. If you're unfamiliar with their form of humor, let me say that it harkens back to the great days of radio drama and production and scripted programs of the 1930s and the 1940s. They truly created an art form. And so, so, so while Mr. they were doing- Mr. Ruderman, let me, let me just interrupt. Yes. Is, there, is there anything relevant to Article 19 that uh, members could not find, say, for instance, off the Wikipedia page for uh, Car Talk, for instance? Because I'm just trying to make sure that we use our time uh, effectively here. Um, no, sir. Yeah. The gentlemen that we wish to memorialize in this in this article are truly pioneers and and uh, heroes of a of an art form of public radio. While they were at their peak, they were heard by three million weekly listeners across the country on 660 public radio stations. At times, they were both residents of Arlington. Tom has passed on. Ray is still a resident of Arlington. It is wholly proper and fitting to honor them with this name. We have the ability to do this. It is, it is meet and proper that we should honor them with giving, and in the spirit of the humor of their program, the tiniest, most insignificant road in the town, the grandest and most glorious, longest name that we could possibly bestow upon it, Malyatsi Boulevard. I ask for your support on this article. Thank you. 
Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Ruderman. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed that your Italian pronunciation is better than mine. Uh, let's take up Mr. Schlickman's point of order, please. Thank you, Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. Uh, we adjourned in the middle of my turn as I was introducing it. I made the motion to substitute, but I didn't have a chance to speak. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Schlickman. I guess I, I, I had the second in my notes, and so I assumed like, that someone was probably just putting that up there, uh, maybe preemptively. So, uh, so, uh, what, why don't we take you, Mr. Slickman, out of turn um, and to, well, it really should have been your turn, and I apologize for that, to actually uh, introduce your motion. And I don't recall, I didn't have it in my notes, whether uh, I allowed uh, the chair of the select board. Uh, so why don't we take you, uh, Mr. Slickman, first, since you're here, um, and uh, we'll save the, gym, the gymnastics of actually getting you from the speaker queue to, to speak now. We have... Uh, your timer going. So why don't you just go ahead and introduce the, uh, the substitute motion, please. Thank you, uh, Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. For the record, the chair of the select board spoke before I did. Um, uh, there is a uh, little write-up in the uh, annotated town meeting. So uh, given that we're already to, what, uh, session nine of the meeting, I'm not going to speak very long. But there are a couple of considerations. First of all, not having a name for this road is a public safety problem in that if uh, something were to happen at or near this location, and it's a very busy location by the Route 2 on-ramp, uh, there's no signs, no way for somebody to call it in and report it. Um, Mr. Ruderman talked about how beloved uh, the Maliazzi brothers are. Uh, and. Uh, as Jason Street is a cut through and uh, and Tom lived on Jason Street, it's the classic don't drive like my brother street. But uh, I want to refute a couple of points made by the select board. Uh, first of all, they questioned whether we have the power to name a street. And if we go back to the 2012 annual town meeting, uh, we note that the select board came to us and requested us to uh, revise a bunch of street names which were spelled differently in different databases. Uh, so apparently 10 years ago, the select board thought we had the authority, in fact, we were necessary for, uh, for naming streets. And the other suggestion was, well, we want to do no action because it should go before the um, Public Memorial Committee, which may not be a bad idea, but the terms of the members of this committee expired in 2016, 2017, and 2018. They are select board appointees. So the select board could have reconstituted them and sent this to them, but they did not. So seeing that this is within our authority, uh, we should do it. We should bring joy to the town, which is much needed after two years of pandemic please vote for the substitute motion and vote yes to name Maliazzi Boulevard. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Fleckman. Apologies for uh, not giving that opportunity to introduce. Um, uh, let's take uh, Mr. Jefferson next. Name and precinct, please. Bob Jefferson, precinct 12. Uh, I'm actually going to speak against Mr. Schlickman's uh, substitute motion and ask that you vote for the no action vote of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Mr. Schlickman actually just covered some of it, um, but there is a process in place. When, when we do memorial namings, you go before the Board of Selectmen, and they refer it to the Public Memorial Committee, and, and then there's a process from there. That's the pro I've, I've been in town my whole life. I've been a town meeting member for over 30 years. That's the process I recall. That's what the Board of Selectmen recommended. And in, in like- uh, uh, Select Board, Mr. Jefferson, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, my yeah. correction. But yeah. again, being around that long, sometimes you make that mistake. Um, and I also agree with Mr. Schlickman that we shouldn't be spending a lot of time on this article. So I'll be very brief, but I really, I really feel that there is a process. And although maybe, you know, 10 years ago, the, board, uh, the select board came back to town meeting and, and wanted our endorsement of some name changes of some streets. Most memorial namings are done through the public memorial committee. Um, I believe this is a very worthy um, naming of that street, but there's a process. And I don't think we should be circumventing the process that's been in place for, for quite a while. And 
the the select board did say that they would send it to the public memorial committee and then have them respond on it and more than likely there would have been favorable action um so that's it my, my recommendation is that we stick to what is the normal process that town meeting doesn't overstep its bounds that we stick to the business that we should be handling in that we vote down Mr. Schlicksman's substitute motion and vote a no action vote of the uh, select board. I do have one question. I'm not sure who can answer it, but no. staring at Article 19, it says Megliozzi Boulevard, and I've heard it pronounced differently from both Mr. Schlickman and Mr. Ruderman. If I could just be, you know, if someone could just clarify what the actual name is. Uh, Mr. Uh, well, I mean, I imagine there's just multiple pronunciations as there are with many kind of uh, immigrant immigrant names over the years where there's the probably the original Italian pronunciation, I believe would be Magliozzi and the anglicized pronunciation would be Magliozzi. Okay, long response, correct, thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Jefferson. Let's take Mr. Jalkett next. Daniel Jalkett, Precinct 6, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, looking at this proposal, I think it would be easy for a lot of us in town to want to support it for the emotional reasons that we just loved car talk. We love the Maliazzi brothers. We want to honor somebody who evidently, you know, one of them still lives in town. There are a lot of compelling reasons to support something like this, but I'm concerned uh, as others are that the process is not best suited for us here at town meeting. Uh, I think it's worth noting that by making a decision now uh, in favor of honoring them in this specific way, we would pretty much be um, you know, making it very unlikely that we would choose to honor them in any, in any other specific way. And I'm not sure this specific choice of a street um, is exactly the right way to do this if we are going to honor them. I get that there's kind of a joke aspect to it, uh, this tiny little street being named with a preposterously grand sounding name, uh, but it's also, it really isn't even a street. If you, if you look on Google Maps and take a look at this, it's really just like, you know, it's just like the, the connector to the frontage road it, it's so small that for anybody who gets the joke, it will be hilarious, but I think it is just as likely to kind of go over people's heads. And it's one of the things that um, would probably be discussed more carefully by a committee that was dedicated to really thinking this through. So I will be voting against this, not because I don't love uh, Car Talk and the memory of that show, but because I'm concerned we might end up making a mistake by choosing to honor them in this way. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you, Mr. Jock. Let's take Mr. Palmer next. I, I will just add that there is an old Latin saying, uh, parvus and potens. I'll leave that as an exercise, exercise to the audience to translate that. Uh, Mr. Palmer, name and precinct, please. <clears throat> Maxwell Palmer, uh, precinct two, motion to terminate debate on this article and all matters before it. Okay, we have a motion to terminate debate uh, from Mr. Palmer. Do we have a second? Uh, we have a second from Mr. McCabe. Um, so let's bring up a vote to terminate debate on, I, uh, on uh, Article 19 and all the matters before it, which would include the substitute motion from Mr. Slickman. Okay, so if you are uh, in favor of terminating debate on Article 19 and the substitute motion, uh, vote yes. If you want to continue debate, uh, vote no. And the waves of voting will be opening up by precinct.
And as always, uh, termination of debate is a two thirds vote. If you're in favor of terminating debate on Article 19 and the substitute motion, uh, vote yes. If you want to continue debate, vote no. Okay, we have over 200 votes in now, just uh, uh, waiting for about, there's about a dozen or so outstanding votes from recently active folks in the portal. Uh, so let's just wait another 20 seconds. If you haven't voted yet, please vote now. Uh, 15 seconds is a vote to terminate debate on Article 19 and the substitute motion. 10 seconds. Did I ever say 10? Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting on termination of debate on Article 19 and the substitute motion. And um, debate is terminated with 199 votes in the affirmative, 23 in the negative. So let's now move on to Mr. Schlickman's substitute motion for Article 19. So now voting on Mr. Schlickman's substitute motion uh, for Article 19. So if you're in favor of substituting uh, the main motion uh, with Mr. Schlickman's motion, uh, which is to name the unnamed public way uh, located between 49th Spring Street and Route 2 Frontage Road as Malyatsi Boulevard, uh, vote yes, if you want to substitute that as the main motion. Uh, if you want to leave the main motion as is, which is no action, then vote no. So this is the vote on whether to accept Mr. Schlichtman's substitute motion as substituting for the main motion. And after this, there will be another vote, regardless of how this vote turns out. But for right now, we're just voting on whether, um, whether to substitute Mr. Schlichtman's motion for the main motion. Um, while we're waiting here, because we're about 200 votes in, can we bring up the, the text of um, Mr. Slickman's substitute motion? So if you want to substitute this motion uh, in place of the main motion, make this the main motion effectively, uh, vote yes. If you want to leave the main motion as a no action, meaning that nothing happens, then vote no. Okay, we're just about done here. Let's take another 15 seconds before we close voting on Mr. Slickman's substitute motion. 10 seconds. Five seconds. And let's close voting. And Mr. Slickman's substitute motion fails. 87 in the affirmative, 143 in the negative. Uh, we'll wait for the screens to cycle through here. Uh, and then after we're, we run off the end of the precincts, we will vote on the main motion, which will not be substituted, but will remain a no action. Almost there. Okay. All right. So let's uh, bring up the main motion. Again, it, it'll be um, not substituted, but it'll remain the original main motion, which is a recommended vote uh, of the select board of no action. Um, so, however, you vote on this, nothing is going to happen as a result, but we have to vote on it anyway for procedural reasons.
Okay, so voting is now open for the main motion uh, for Article 19, which is a recommended vote of no action by the select board. Um, see a message about waiting for your um, uh, your wave of voting um, to be enabled, then just sit tight. But if you're able to vote, please vote. Okay, we're voting here on the main motion of Article 19, which is a recommended vote of no action. Um, meaning that however you vote, um, effectively nothing will happen. Okay, we have over 220 votes in so far. Um, let's just wait another 15 seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And the motion passes, so therefore we will do nothing. Given that this is a no action, I will take the liberty and uh, exercise my discretion to say that we will not wait for the screens. We'll just move on since it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that uh, we have disposed of that article at, at this point, and we're moving on now to uh, Article uh, 20. So we'll bring that up. And Article 20 is also a no action, rec recommended vote of no action by the select board. Uh, so let's bring up uh, first, um, bring up Mr. Diggins, chair of the select board, just to introduce this article and the uh, briefly discuss the select board's vote on this. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The select board unanimously recommends no action on this article, not because the concerns on which it is based lack merit, but because it conflicts with the Town Manager Act. There are ways to influence how the town manager deploys resources. Those ways include direct appeals to the town manager, appeals to the select board, and even a resolution at town meeting. But efforts to force the hand of a town manager in good standing with the select board are beyond the scope of town meeting's authority. And I say that as a fellow town meeting member who deeply respects the, excuse me, deeply respects this institution as authority. Essentially, we are wrestling with the separation of power in our town. To that end, should town meeting members want further input from the town manager and town council regarding the role of the town manager in the enforcement of bylaws, then through the, through the town moderator, they are willing to elaborate further. Thank you. Thank you. And so uh, we have a substitute motion that was um, uh, submitted in advance by Mr. Schlickman. So let's uh, bring up Mr. Schlickman to introduce uh, his substitute motion and to actually move it so that we can um, consider it. Mr. Schlickman, go ahead, uh, name and precinct. Uh, Paul Schlickman, precinct nine, I move substitution under article 20. Okay, uh, Mr. Schlickman's moving his substitute motion under article 20, do we have a second? Uh, we have a second from uh, Mr. Weinstein. Uh, so uh, Mr. Schlickman, go ahead. Uh, uh, introduce your, your substitute motion, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, once again, in the annotated warrant, there's a couple of pages of description of why this is before us, uh, as well as town meeting members who have been with us for a long time have an annual tradition, not, not just to ask how much salt we used every year, but to wonder why our bylaws aren't being enforced. And we sit here and we debate to the inch, to the hour, uh, all sorts of things within the bylaws. Then we set them in motion and sit here and watch uh, a whole bunch of them not being enforced. So that's the ultimate no action. It is, if we're talking separation of powers, I think that the votes of town meeting need to be respected and the laws that we work very hard to craft and, uh, and pass need to be enforced they can't just be set aside and ignored because without enforcement all we have is a code of municipal suggestions 
Now, let's talk about what this substitute motion does, which is not very much at all. It does not create a, a position in any place in town government. Although we could add funding into the town budget for a position, we can't force the town to create it. We are not adding any money to the budget because this is not a budgetary position. We are not overstepping our bounds whatsoever. All we are doing is essentially putting a box of badges on the desk of the Director of Community and uh, Planning and Development and giving them the authority to do some enforcement by designating an employee in that division as a code compliance officer. Now, what does this mean? It means very simply, the town could do nothing or they could use it to have somebody send out letters to property owners suggesting that they might be in violation of the town bylaws and they might want to correct it. And if the problem persists, they can send another letter, certified mail, saying, you know, we, we talked to you before, please uh, view this as a notice of violation. Uh, please come into compliance with the town bylaws. The town has come up with no, no plan to enforce these bylaws. And by urging us to vote no action, that's exactly what we're going to get. This is planting a seed in our bylaws, allowing for some enforcement if the town chooses to. And if we're still looking at the same violations we were this year and every year before this, when we come back to town meeting next year, we can come and, and, and do something more significant and pressure the select board to do something more significant. Now, I view myself as a legislator and not an executive. All I'm trying to do is use what little legislative power we have to get the executive branch of this government to pay attention to the bylaws we pass and enforce them or come back to us and make a suggestion that, well, we shouldn't be enforcing this bylaw. Why don't we repeal it? What we have now is ridiculous and short of running for the select board myself i just prefer to having some town meeting support in terms of moving things forward a little more this year thank you all right so while we have mr slickman there and, and this won't count against your time because this is a procedural matter um and i i did i tried contact you in advance but uh i didn't get a reply about um the wording of this substitute motion, and I apologize, I should have brought this up before we actually moved the substitute motion and seconded it. But in the last paragraph, Mr. Schlickman, the, um, if we can bring up the text of the substitute motion for Article 20, thank you. So that last paragraph, a record of all complaints and requests for enforcement of the bylaws, including the date of the request, the date of the finding, and the disposition of the complaint shall be maintained electronically as a public document. My reading of this is that that last paragraph applies to all of the uh, enforcement officers, uh, not, not specifically the code compliance officer, but would also apply to the police department, so, so to police officers. Is that the intention of the substitute motion? Because then that would, in, in my reading, would fall out of scope of the text of the, uh, the main motion, or uh, I'm sorry, of the, uh, of the uh, warrant article. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, I did receive your email, and I'm, I'm neglectful for not responding. Um, uh, I, I looked at the ruling by the town council that this might be a question, and uh, uh, it was my assumption that you'd be uh, adding uh, a word uh, or two in here is a um, is a friendly amendment to. Uh, uh, related to the code compliance. You would accept that as a, uh, effectively as an administrative change. Can we bring that? Is, is that correct? Yes, I would. I okay, would. So let's. I, I, I didn't want to argue the point. I, and I, and I see the, the point that you're raising. Great. Thank you. Mr. So this is, this is uh, just uh, what I put together kind of administratively to make sure to bring this into the scope of the four corners of the warrant article. Uh, which we need to remain in scope of. And so the highlighted areas here just bring it into scope by uh, um, restricting it to the, the, the record of all complaints to the code compliance officer specifically and requests for the code compliance officer's enforcement of the bylaws, so on and so forth. 
Uh, so Mr. Slickman accepts that as a, uh, a friendly amendment or effectively, a, we're just, we're just gonna make that change administratively to save us some votes. Um, Cause otherwise this uh, substitute motion would be out of scope um, for the warrant article. Thank you, Mr. Slickman. Thank um, you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. So let's go back now to uh, the speaking queue. And so let's take um, uh, Mr. Moore next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. Could I ask through the moderator for the town manager to speak to the current staffing strategy for code enforcement and any future plans? And also whether or not this bylaw change would be necessary or helpful in improving our code enforcement. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, uh, can, do you have answers to uh, Mr. Moore's questions about uh, staffing and whether this would actually help with enforcement in your opinion? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. I, I'd be happy to try to answer that question. So uh, to answer the first part, I would say for the past couple of years, we have struggled with uh, maintaining full staffing in the inspectional services division through a combination of retirements and transitions out of the department. And that has resulted, well, and I should say that's actually been coupled with an ever increasing workload based on the number of building permits that we've seen uh, pulled in town for everything from small building renovations all the way up to home reconstructions, as well as reviewing of plans at the high school, reviewing of plans in the new DPW facility. There's been uh, an increased workload placed upon that department. With some of that workload, especially related to the high school and DPW now having passed by, as well as the department being fully staffed, I feel that we're in a position now where inspectional services can begin to more proactively address some of these code compliance issues that have been spoken about tonight. In addition to that, town meeting members may recall uh, under the operating budget article, uh, there was an increase approved in the ZBA budget. And that actually directly correlates to enhancing the time that can be put towards inspectional services code enforcement, as it was a shared position between the inspectional services division and the ZBA, giving the ZBA that dedicated staff while also retaining funding and inspectional services enhances our code enforcement capability. So I think we are actually now adequately funded and staffed to begin to do better enforcement in the manner in which the proponent of this substitute motion spoke. More generally, I would say, in response to the second part of your question, that putting this requirement in the bylaws as being proposed um, is an increase in funding that is not, a, it would, would result in an increase in funding that's not currently contained within the budgets. Um, there seems to be an underlying assumption that there are, you know, is a person or a position or more than one position in the planning department that has the time and bandwidth to do external code enforcement work. I don't currently believe that is true. So by creating this requirement in the bylaw, would sort of tacitly assume that next year we would have to add this position in the budget. And that would be all well and good, but I think it gets the process backwards. This town for decades has had a very robust budgetary process whereby in the fall, it considers internal departmental budget requests, then submits that to the select board and the finance committee in January. And then there's a very long, months long uh, public review process of the budget where the finance committee considers all of the matters that end up getting recommended to town meeting. So should there be a desire to add workload and or a new position, I do think it should go through the budgetary process so all factors can be considered before recommending it. But overall, uh, I would say that I do think we are now in a position with our inspectional services staffing to meet the demands and the needs as described by the substitute motions proponent. Thank you. Um. Let's, I think we haven't heard from uh, Ms. Barron, I think perhaps this entire town meeting. So let's uh, take Ms. Barron in position nine, just out of order. Cause I think we've heard from everyone else in some capacity or another. Or now number eight, yeah. Name and precinct, please. Sherry Barron, precinct seven. Do you hear me? I do, please go oh, ahead. Yeah. Thank you, great. Um, I, I'm wondering if Mr. Schlick, if you could ask Mr. Schlickman 
to give us a few examples of uh, violations that have not been recognized due to this lack of staffing or um, ability to find out what code violations are happening in town? Uh, sure, uh, Mr. Slickman, uh, if we can bring him up, it looks like he's available to speak. Uh, um, do you have any examples? Um, for what Ms. Sure. Uh, Paul, Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9, sure. The most obvious one is the Gentle Dental, which is right across the street from Town Hall. And we have mentioned this, on this uh, in town meeting for years and years and years. And my presentation goes back 10 years with the pictures from, of Mass Ave uh, from Google Maps, that this has persisted and persisted and persisted, despite the fact that several years in the budget session, People are asked, how come this exists across the street from town hall? And nothing, nothing seems to happen. Understand the zoning bylaw prohibits signage and windows to occupy more than 25% of the space. That's the biggest, most obvious one. There are many others around town that have been existing for years and years as well. But this is the classic example. And the fact is that if we were in town meeting in many occasions, bringing this up, I would think that if the town was serious about doing any kind of real co code compliance and doing something about enforcement, uh, knowing this article was coming up, the way to, to uh, prompt a no action vote would have been between January and now to go and, and, and uh, make sure that the owners of those signs took care of them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Schlickman. Um, I understand budgetary constraints about adding staff, but um, you know rules are, are made, and I, I think we need to find some manner in which to deal with code violations, or they'd simply become something that's written on paper and uh, people just ignore them. Um, I mean, I know in terms of, for example, fences that by code are not supposed to block a driveway. They're supposed to uh, decrease down to four feet at the base of a driveway so that you can see when you're backing out. And I made the mistake of having a fence put up that violated that. And at the time I was told that everyone does it. Um, so that's a safety issue. Um, so I, I am concerned about this, and um, I am going to vote um, in favor of Mr. Schlickman's amendment. Thank you. A substitute motion. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Ms. Barron. Let's take Mr. Jefferson next. Bob Jefferson, Precinct 12. Uh, I'll try to be brief, but for the same reasons I spoke in the last article, I just feel that there is a process in place and there's a process in place for town meeting warrant articles. That process was that Mr. Schlickman and, and I watched his presentation to the select board uh, and they listened to it and they understood it, but then they made a decision, no action vote. I think that a warrant article of this type, similar to some of the other articles that we, that we address, should be addressed in different venues and, and where they should probably be, be taken care of. An article like this brought before the Board of Selectmen quite often, excuse me again, but in, brought in front of the select board, um, they take action on it. They tell the manager to look into it and usually we get some type of results. I think Mr. Diggins covered it very clearly in his opening remarks. And I think Mr. Chapdelaine covered it very clearly as to why he feels that you know, they're moving forward in the right direction. I feel that it's not town meetings position or responsibility to be telling town management how to run the town. I understand what we're doing here is we're trying to put a, a little more emphasis on, on some bylaws that aren't being enforced. I've been in town meeting for over 30 years. Every time we've asked the uh, inspections division head or uh, police chief about certain um, things that should be enforced. They look into it and they take care of it to the best of their ability within 
the scope of their job and having the proper manpower to do it. Again, I, I don't want to waste any more time on this. I recommend you vote against Mr. Schlickman's substitute motion and vote positive on the select board's motion of no action. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. I just want to uh, remind folks um, that and this isn't like targeted at any any individual speakers at this point. Just going forward, uh, if you find that uh, you're if you're going to be just repeating what folks have already said earlier in the speaking queue uh, and not add anything new, you can always remove yourself from the speaking queue. It would save us some time uh, and bring up speakers who might have something new to say. And again, I'm not targeting at that at, at any individual speaker. Um, let's take up Mr. Benson next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Eugene Benson, Precinct 10. If I might, through you, I have a few questions about this mm -hmm. for town council. Sure. Um, the first question is, um, this is not in the zoning bylaws. This is in the regular town bylaws, but it appears that uh, Mr. Schlickman intends this to apply to the zoning bylaws. And I'm wondering from town council whether this is actually in the wrong place being in um, Title IX Article one of the town bylaws and it really belongs in the zoning bylaws so that's the first question okay to I, mean, I, I don't want to I, I don't want to speak to uh mr slushman's intentions beyond just the uh, the plain text of his substitute motion but uh mr uh mr heim um do you have an interpretation or an opinion on where it would be most suitable to have uh uh, uh the, the, this uh this bylaw change Doug Heim, Town Council. Uh, Mr. Benson's correct. We're talking about two different things. Uh, the code enforcement that most people are talking about or thinking about with respect to the zoning bylaw has to be inserted in the zoning bylaw. The building inspector in Arlington happens to be the zoning enforcement officer. It doesn't have to be, but in Arlington, uh, our zoning bylaw has the building inspector serve as the zoning enforcement officer. So that's the first place to go when there's a complaint about zoning. The building inspector also enforces the state building code. And I don't think that Mr. Schlickman is suggesting necessarily that the state building code would be enforced by anybody else because that would be quite difficult. That's really only within the bailiwick of the building inspector and um, uh, license inspectors. The final thing, which I think Mr. Benson is alluding to is the town bylaws do contain a whole number of provisions about all kinds of things. And there are a number of folks who are authorized to enforce town bylaws, the police department, can issue a fine for a violation of town bylaws uh, as low as $20 or as much as $300, depending on the bylaw. And our health department agents are authorized to enforce some things as well, uh, but they're very specific. So um, I think what, uh, to, get to answer your question, Mr. Benson, you're correct that this would not change anything with respect to the enforcement of the zoning bylaws. It would, however, in theory, create a position that if created and funded could enforce certain aspects of the town bylaws that are enforced by police, inspectional services, and a couple other folks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. If, if I might continue then, um, I would recommend that um, town meeting vote no on this substitute motion for as the town council said, what Mr. Schlickman has said he wants to do and what his example was, gentle dental, is a zoning bylaw and he's chosen the wrong place to do it. This would not do what he intends. Second is we're not asking, we shouldn't be asking planning and community development to do code compliance. What he's asking them to do is zoning bylaw compliance, which is something else. Um, I'm a member of the redevelopment board. I'd be happy to work with Mr. Schlickman for next year's town meeting about um, inserting something in the zoning bylaw to accomplish not designating a code compliance officer, but at least getting an annual record of complaints. The other problem with this substitute motion is the second paragraph is in the passive voice. It doesn't tell us who is required to do the record of complaints, which when you're writing law, 
is just um, uh, just something you don't do. So for those reasons, I am going to vote against this and ask town meeting to do so also. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Uh, let's take someone out of order uh, who I don't believe we've heard some from uh, in some time is uh, uh, Ms. Atlas, who's currently in the eighth position. Hi, Aliyah Atlas, Precinct 4. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to raise the concerns about the risks for uh, basically biased enforcement of this. And where all we're talking about is fines. This also has the risk of unfairly impacting those who may not be able to comply or pay a series of fines um, that were targeted at them. I recognize that at least the police are nicely trained with unbiased in, uh, training and such to try and avoid doing this, but that is not generally. And I don't see any precautions in here that wouldn't turn it into, well, the equivalent of a nightmare for somebody who is accidentally violating one or can't afford to correct it immediately. Yes, we have to respect the town bylaws, but I don't see a problem. I also obviously share the concerns about uh, venue appropriateness. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Atlas. Let's take Mr. Revlak next. Hello, Mr. Moderator, Steve Revelak, Precinct One. Um, as Mr. Benson happened to ask most of my questions, I'll, leave, I'll skip to the one that he missed. I was wondering if there is anyone through you, Mr. Moderator, from the Department of Planning and Community Development that would uh, care to provide uh, commentary on this article. Thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, Ms. Raitt from the Director of the uh, Planning and Community Development uh, Department, uh, have anything uh, to weigh in on, on uh, this uh, article? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jennifer Raitt, Director of Planning and Community Development. I don't have anything to weigh in on this particular article. I did not have an opportunity to review it with the petitioner um, or the substitute motion as now proposed and being discussed. And it, uh, as it relates to the upcoming uh, fiscal year, this is not something that has been considered as part of the uh, upcoming objectives of the department and would need to be further discussed for some point in the future. So perhaps um, at that point in the future, it should be considered by the department and uh, further information can be provided to this body at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Revlock, anything else? Nothing further, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, let's take um, Nick Spretzer next. Name and precinct, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. David Pretzer, Precinct 17. I move to terminate debate on this article and all matters before it. All right, well, so we have a motion to terminate debate. Um, by Mix Pretzer. Do we have a second? We have a second from Mr. Siano. Let's click on the second button. Uh, so uh, let's bring up a vote to terminate debate on Article 20 and the substitute motion before it. Uh, for the record, we are at the 15 minute and five second mark into this article. Um, so I did not have to trigger the 15 minute rule. Okay, so voting should be opening shortly uh, and may, may already be open for your precinct. If you're in favor of terminating debate on Article 20 and the substitute motion, vote yes. If you want to continue debate, vote no. Okay. If you see a message in the voting portal saying that your voting controls will be enabled in the next wave, uh, just sit tight. It should open up uh, um, in short order. And once you're able to vote, please vote. We're voting here on whether to terminate debate on Article 20 and the substitute motion by Mr. Schluckman. 
If you want to terminate debate, vote yes. If you want to continue debate, vote no. Okay, we have over 200 votes now that are in. Still waiting for several more. Um, if you haven't voted yet, please vote on whether to terminate debate on Article 20 and the substitute motion. Okay, let's just give folks another 15 seconds before we close voting on termination of debate. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. Okay, debate is terminated. 203 in the affirmative, 14 in the negative. We'll now open voting on the main motion unamended. Um, this is a, a recommended vote of no action by the select board. Uh, so let's open voting on that for Article 20. We're voting on the, um, the unamended, unsubstituted um, main motion with a uh, recommended vote of no action from the select board. Um, so we have to vote on it. Um, let's see, we have a point of order from Mr. Schlickman. Let's, uh, let's take that. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. We voted to terminate debate, but we skipped over the vote on the substitute motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Slickman. I'm so sorry about that. That was unintentional. My mistake. Um, let's, yeah, we'll, we'll just cancel that and we'll have a second vote that'll be tallied. We'll ignore the first. I'm really sorry about that. Um, got ahead of myself there. So let's uh, open voting on the substitute motion by Mr. Slickman. If, uh, if that's what the other point of orders are about, um, feel free to. Uh, remove your request for a point of order. So we're voting on Mr. Slickman's substitute motion. I apologize for that confusion. If you are in favor of substituting Mr. Slickman's uh, substitute motion um, in place of the recommended vote of no action, vote yes. Uh, if you want to leave the, rec the, the main motion as a no action vote, then vote no. Um, voting yes, in favor of Mr. Schlickman's substitute motion would grant power to a code compliance officer in the Department of Planning and Community Development for enforcing provisions of the town bylaws and zoning bylaws that do not pertain to building standards. So if you're in favor of that substitute motion, vote yes. If uh, you're opposed and you want to leave the no action recommended vote as is, then vote no. And can we clear uh, Mr. Slickman's point of order? Okay, we have over 220 votes in now. All right, so we now have, we have the substitute motion up on the screen. Um, we did make an administrative change to that last paragraph, so that it is specific to the code compliance officer uh, and not other officers. Thank you. Um, Okay, it's just a few stragglers uh, who have not voted yet, who have been active in the portal recently. So let's just wait another 15 seconds. 10 seconds until we close voting on the substitute motion. Five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. Okay, and the substitute motion fails. Uh, 43, excuse me, 43 in the affirmative, 182 in the negative. Uh, we'll just wait for the screens to cycle through here, all the precincts. And 
After we're done seeing the votes from all the precincts, we will go to vote on the main motion uh, without substitution. Um, and uh, after that, we will take a, a, a short uh, break. Okay, uh, so let's uh, open voting now on the main motion, which is a recommended vote by the select board of no action. We're starting to get some connection errors with the server. Hopefully that's just intermittent and goes away. Um, okay, so voting is now open for the main motion of Article 20, which has a recommended vote of no action. So if you're in favor of no action, vote yes. If you're opposed to no action, um, vote no, but there will still be no action. We just have to vote on it procedure for procedural reasons, um, which are not very interesting. It seems like we are starting to get these uh, connection error screens um, a bit more than we have been in recent meetings. So hopefully during the break, we could have someone who can look into that. I'm seeing about 150 votes cast so far. So that's going a bit slower than it has been. Um, So we're going to give folks a little bit more time because we still only have about 170 votes in. Okay, we're at 209 votes. They are, they are trickling in. So if you're, uh, it seems like a number of folks are having trouble voting through the portal, probably getting the, like the, uh, the connection error screens. Um, that's continuing to happen for you. Uh, you can enter your vote um, by typing it into the Q&A. Also, someone's noting in the Q&A that uh, they noticed they had uh, two browser windows or tabs open that were participating in town meeting. 
um, that could be increasing the load on the server. So um, check your, uh, uh, your, your kind of desktop environment on your computer to see in your browser if you have multiple particip uh, participate windows or tabs open in your browser and please close all but one of them and that might help. Okay, we're at 224 votes. Um, okay, I guess let's give another uh, 30 seconds. Uh, 20 seconds. Until we close voting on the main motion of Article 20, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds. Okay, let's close voting. And the main motion passes. Uh, 184 in the in the affirmative, 31 in the negative. Let's actually just cycle through the screen so everyone can, can since we're having some issues with voting, so folks can confirm whether the vote is actually showing up or not. Again, this is a uh, recommended vote of no action, uh, so the stakes are significantly lower than they are for um, for votes that are not no action. But uh, just as a test of the system, since we were having some technical difficulties there, please confirm that your vote actually did get in. Um, so we can assess whether if you had any issues where your vote was not showing up, uh, please let us know in the Q&A. And we have a um, we have a point of order from uh, Mr. Rosenthal. Let's just let's take that before we go on break. Apologies, I did not see that sooner. <clears throat> Mark Rosenthal, Precinct 14. Um, I actually raised this point of order uh, quite a long time before you closed voting because I realized that your description of uh, you know, of the uh, significance of voting yes or no, uh, I realized I really didn't quite understand it. Uh, are you saying that whenever um, whenever the recommended recommended vote is no action, that there really is no way for us to say, yes, we want to do this in spite of the fact that the uh, recommendation is no action, because uh, that was what it sounded like to me, that uh, it didn't matter whether we voted yes or no, because, um, you know, because either way, uh, if we voted yes, we'd be agreeing with the no action. And if we voted no, it was meaningless. Uh, did I misinterpret you? Uh, I, I think that that's basically correct. Um, um, maybe we could bring up, uh, since we're kind of heading into break anyway, uh, folks can feel free to, to, to go on break for 10 minutes if you don't want to wait for the answer, but uh, we're going to ask uh, 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 town council, Mr. Heim, um, is there really any distinction between voting yes versus voting no on a, uh, a motion that has a recommended vote of no action? Doug Heim, town council. There's a difference insofar as um, developing a clear and coherent record when you support a vote of no action, you're supporting to you're essentially making a clear vote that you're not uh, that that you're supporting the recommended motion. Uh, when you vote no, when the recommended vote is no action and there's no pending substitute motion, um, you're essentially suggesting that there's something else to be done. But under town meetings typical uh, protocols unless there's a substitute motion that's already been drafted and transmitted to town meeting members before the start of the meeting, um, there's really not something to do. And so the article isn't disposed of, it's just sort of hanging around as saying, okay, well, we disagreed with the vote of no action, so now what? There's not even necessarily a clear signal of what happens. So the bottom line, is that functionally speaking, you're correct, Mr. Moderator, that when you vote no on a recommended vote of no action and there's no substitute motion pending or a substitute motion has failed, um, you're, you're kind of spitting in the wind, if you will. Um, and if you vote 
yes, I mean, you're making a clear record that this is what's happening in town meeting. I don't mean to suggest that people can't make uh, a statement uh, about what they believe and support by voting no. Um, it's primarily symbolic for you to vote no to a vote of no action. Thank you. It's a, it's a fair point though, Mr. Rosenthal, that like if, if a lot of folks, for instance, like if like 98% of town meeting members voted no on a no action, it's probably a signal as Mr. Heim is saying that there's more to do there and someone could use that signal you know, to make, for instance, a political case for doing something. Okay, may I ask a question to help clarify it for my understanding? Uh, is this is a question we could take offline so folks can go on break or? Sure, sure. Okay, but let's take that offline. And, uh, and so, yeah, let's go on break for 10 minutes. Come back please at 9.55. And we're now going to, we now have uh, article 24 in front of us. Um, Articles 21, 22, and 23 were, were already disposed of, so we're now at Article 24. This is home rule le legislation uh, involving financial estimates and budget documents. And so uh, while we're bringing that up, uh, let's, uh, let's um, I'll now call on uh, the chair of the select board, Mr. Diggins, to um, introduce the uh, recommended vote from the select board on this article, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. By combined vote of 14 to one, the Finance Committee and Select Board recommended favorable action. This is a case in which we can have our cake and eat it too. FinCom can get whatever preliminary budget information that it wants in accord with our current schedule, but the formal and more accurate budget presentation the Select Board can wait until after the governor's budget is released. Many thanks go to the previous Select Board Chair, Steve DeCourcy and his 25 years on FinCom for crafting a compromise that gained near unanimous support of that venerable committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Great, thank you, Mr. Diggins. And uh, I see that uh, we already have someone in the speaking queue, uh, Mr. Dennis, let's uh, bring him up. Speak, and we have, uh, we have no uh, subsidiary motions on this moment. So we'll take up Mr. Dennis, name and precinct, please. Uh, Greg Dennis, precinct one. Uh, I'm in favor of this. I just do have a question, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the main motion is a Home Rule Amendment to the Town Manager Act. I have some familiarity with the Home Rule process and I know it to be a very slow, opaque and unpredictable process. So I'm wondering about the thinking here of enshrining this in the Town Manager Act, which requires Home Rule as opposed to trying to encode it in the bylaws, which would be easier for us to change in the future. Should we wanna tweak this again? I just hate for us to go back through the Home Rule process with each tweak. You know, some of the existing language we're modifying is already in the Town Manager Act. So perhaps part of this needs to be a home rule, but when we did the fossil fuel infrastructure motion a few years back, if you remember, we voted for a combination of home rule legislation that delegated some of the details to a bylaw. So that's my question, Mr. Meyer, just the, the thinking here between bylaw versus home rule. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Diggins, do you have an answer for that? Like I, my answer is, is that I would like to ask the town council um, uh, Mr. Heim, uh, can we redirect that to you? Doug Heim, Town Council. Um, the reason is that I think it, uh, we opted for a fairly straightforward um, approach to this. The Town Manager Act contains this uh, provision. It's meant to be a sort of um, part of our constitution, if you will, and to some degree, the Manager Act sort of controls, I appreciate what Mr. Dennis is saying, which is that the, sometimes there's some things that are nice to codify in bylaws because they're easier to change. Um, if you'll indulge me for some commentary, there's a little bit of a difference when Arlington is voting on its own governance uh, procedures and structures. It tends not to be as difficult to foresee the way the legislature will handle it. It's just a matter of time sense that if town meeting votes to support a change in the way in which we do something at the very local level, something of this nature, um, there's not really as complicated of a process forward from a legislative standpoint. Um, so uh, while you're right that it will take more time to see the town manager act amended than it typically takes to see a town bylaw amendment, um, uh, there's usually not a lot of uh, difficulty or debate 
it's just a matter of trying to make sure the legislation looks right from the perspective of House and Senate Council. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Heim. Uh, Mr. Dennis, anything else? That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's take uh, Ms. Weber next. Janice Weaver, Precinct 21. Um, may I ask who dissented on the vote? You said there was one dissension. But from the select board or from the- uh, I think the finance committee. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Foskett, uh, do you have an answer to that question? Who, who dissented uh, uh, on the- Actually, I uh, don't recall. I can look it up and find it in a second. Okay, no? thank you. Continue and I'll come back to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, let's take uh, Mr. Wagner next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Yep. Great, thank you. I just had a question for the moderator, perhaps to pass on to the Finance Committee if a representative is willing to, to speak on it. On page eight of the Finance Committee report to town meeting for Article 24, it says at the bottom in bold, uh, a Finance Committee, the Finance Committee will report on this article at town meeting. Uh, did I miss this in the earlier reports or, in, or will it be in future reports if uh, if the town meeting is not going to hear the Finance Committee uh, representative right now? Thank you. Right, so Mr. Fosca, can you clarify whether like that Finance Committee will report at town meeting, is that just submitting the report or is that actually kind of speaking at town meeting uh, about this point? Well, uh, we, we provided a report which is in the annotated uh, Charles Foskett, Precinct 10, Chair of, the Finance Committee, uh, Chair, Chair of the Finance Committee. We provided a report, uh, which is in the annotated warrant, which says that the Finance Committee voted to support the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Select Board. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Select Board. And, okay. And um, uh, Mr. Wagner, did you have anything else? Um, I don't really think that answers my question, but uh, in the interest of time, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. Foskett, just to circle back to you, uh, do you have an answer to Ms. Weber's question about who dissented? Not yet. Okay. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. McCabe next. Name and precinct, please. Let's see, are we able to get Mr. McCabe up? I don't see Mr. McCabe among the attendees in Zoom. Um, trying to get in. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay, great. Uh, I stand to terminate debate. Uh, I'm sorry, name and precinct, please. I'm sorry, uh, Mark McCabe, precinct two. I stand to terminate debate on Article 24 and all matters before it. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. McCabe uh, to, and before anyone, before I entertain any seconds, uh, I will note that there is no one else in the speaking queue. So if I do not recognize a second and there are no more speakers, then we can proceed straight to voting without voting to terminate debate. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Foskett. I have the answer to the um, member's question about the negative vote. The negative vote was uh, by uh, Vice Chair Deschler. Okay. Uh, okay. So thank you, Mr. Foskett. Um, seeing that we have no more speakers in the queue, I will not recognize any seconds and there are no more speakers. So we will move to voting on the main motion. Thank you. Okay, so we're now opening voting on the main motion of Article 24, which is home rule legislation related to financial estimates and budget documents. Okay, so voting should be opening now. And this is home, uh, so if you're in favor of uh, introducing home rule legislation to amend the Town Manager Act um, so that First draft budget and revenues are presented. Uh, this is a summary from Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Um, then uh, vote yes. If you are 
if you do not if you uh, do not wish to introduce home rule legislate legislation for this purpose, then you would vote no. And while we're waiting for voting, um, maybe we could, we could even uh, just bring up the text of uh, like the vote language for Article 24 from the annotated warrant, just so everyone can see it. Thank you. Okay, we have just over 200 votes have been cast. This is for the main motion of Article 24 to introduce home rule legislation for financial estimates and budget documents. Let's see. And you can find this uh, in the annotated warrant so you can see everything on your screen and scroll at your own pace. Um, otherwise, you can watch the scrolling by on screen. Uh, if you're in favor of these changes um, to the Town Manager Act, you vote yes. Uh, if you're not in favor of these changes, uh, you can vote no. Okay, we have 215 votes in. Still missing about 14 from folks who've been recently active in the portal. Um, let's just give another uh, 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. If you're in favor of these changes to the Town Manager Act, vote yes. Fifteen seconds. If you're not in favor, you can vote no. Ten seconds. Five seconds until we close voting. Let's go ahead and close voting on the main motion of Article 24. And the vote passes 210 in the affirmative, seven in the negative. We'll just watch the screens go by. It is a positive vote. And after we've gone through all the precinct screens to show all the votes, uh, we will then uh, have Article 25 before us. Okay, just two more screens. Okay, and so let's now open up Article 25. This is home rule legislation uh, related to early voting for town elections. And so this was on the consent agenda. This was uh, removed by uh, Mr. Leone. And as we've been doing uh, so far, we'll, we'll give uh, him the first chance to speak uh, after we um, uh, hear from uh, the select board chair and from Mr. Dennis, the uh, proponent um, uh, from the election modernization study committee uh, chair. Uh, so let's, uh, 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 Mr. Diggins, uh, Chair of the Select Board, um, can you speak to the, uh, the vote of the, the recommended vote of the Select Board? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The Select Board voted five to zero to recommend positive action on the EMCs, that is the Election Modernization Committee's article that would request and authorize the Select Board to file 
on legislation allowing for early voting in town elections. We hope that the state will pass a local option statute that would permit voting times as specified in this article, but rather than just waiting and hoping, we applaud the EMC for encouraging Arlington to show our state reps and senators that there is a strong desire here to make voting easier for everyone. The select board also expresses its deep gratitude to all of the members of the EMC for their hard work during this, excuse me, during this extended existence. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Okay, thank you. And uh, let's now bring up uh, Mr. Dennis, uh, the chair of the Election Modernization Study Committee, uh, who um, this article was uh, uh, re requested by. Thank you. Uh, Greg Dennis, Precinct 1 and Chair of the Election Modernization Committee. Article 25 proposes home rule legislation that would allow registered voters to vote early in town elections, much the way they can in state general elections today. The Election Modernization Committee has been interested in creating early voting options since our very first meeting back in 2019. But when we learned how similar home rule proposals from other communities stalled in the state house, we had turned our attention to other matters that we felt had a higher likelihood of success. However, in the years since, we think the tide has shifted in our favor. The pandemic has created an openness to more flexible voting options, and there's substantial support in the state house for early voting in local elections today. So in short, we think we have a better shot than we would have three years ago, uh, enough to make it worth this article. And even if this home rule stalls like those older attempts, uh, submitting it represents an important statement on behalf of the town to Beacon Hill of the importance we place on the issue. The motion specifies a minimum of three days of early voting. The select board in consultation with the clerk is authorized to offer additional days beyond that minimum. Early voting hours must extend to at least 7 p.m. on at least one of those days. And if the election is held on a weekday, at least one early voting day must be a weekend. Uh, the other rules about the designation and public notice of early voting sites mimic uh, those rules for early voting in state elections. And the clerk's office believes early voting in town elections can largely be absorbed by existing staff, meaning making any financial impact minimal. Uh, and finally, I'd like to acknowledge that as of this town meeting, the Election Modernization Committee has reached its end of life. And we thank town meeting for a very productive three years and ask you to read our report to learn more about our efforts over this past year. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. And thank you for your work on the Election Modernization Study Committee and everyone else who served on that committee. Thank you for your service. Um, and I, I do want to uh, give uh, Mr. Leone the opportunity to speak. Uh, he did remove this from the consent agenda. So, um, uh, but first, before we take Mr. Leone, I see that we do have a point of order from Mr. Jameson. Um, so let's take that first and then we'll go to Mr. Leone from the speaking queue. Mr. Jameson, uh, name and precinct and your point of order. Uh, Gordon Jameson, precinct 12. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Do we have to move to dis dissolve the uh, election modernization committee or is that uh, already in, in the cards? Uh, I'm not aware of that being in the business of this annual town meeting. Uh, that's something we can- uh, but, but yeah. The gentleman suggested that uh, the, the committee is, um, we can do that um, without a article, I believe. Um, do we need to dissolve them or are they dissolved as of the end of this meeting? Right, so since uh, there's about a 0% chance that this will be our last meeting of this annual town meeting, I would suggest that we, we take that offline to work out the procedures for that. Perhaps Mr. Dennis could comment. Uh, I'd, I'd rather discuss it offline, but thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, thank you, perhaps Dennis. you can make, resolve that by the end of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I will resolve it by the end of annual town meeting for sure. Um, so let's take Mr. Leone now. Good evening, Mr. Moderator. I'm not sure that I took this off this uh, consent agenda, but if I did, it was by mistake. But I'd like to thank the Election Modernization Committee, many of whom I appointed for the work that they've done for the town over the past three years. And I'm wholeheartedly in favor of this article. Thank you very much. And, uh, I'm sorry, and name and precinct for the record? John Leone, right. precinct eight. Great, thank you, Mr. Leone. Um, uh, okay, so let's uh, continue on through uh, the speaking queue. Uh, let's take uh, Mr. Kepline. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mark Kepline, precinct nine. Uh, yeah, uh, my initial question was about cost. I'm sorry about what? Uh, Mr. Uh, Kepline, you're, you're muted right now. 
Mr. Kaplan, did you accidentally mute? Uh, you... No, I did nothing and it muted on its own. Okay, uh, apologies for that. Uh, it said the moderator muted me, whatever. So uh, my initial concern was cost, but I guess there's no additional cost. Is that correct? Uh, let's, um, take, uh, Mr. Diggins, do you know, is there any additional uh, cost? Uh, Mr. Oh, moderator, I would say this would be a question for the town clerk. Yeah. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, do you have an answer? Will this increase costs to support um, early elections? Julie Brazil, town clerk. Um, I, I don't believe it will um, have uh, a very substantial cost in the in the early years. And then if, if it does, it can be revisited during the annual budget process. Okay. Um, so, and this is orthogonal to mail-in voting? Uh, Ms. Brazil, is this separate from independent of mail-in voting? Yes, this is in-person early voting, which is not currently allowed um, for uh, local elections. Okay. Um, I, I had a curiosity on mail-in voting. Uh, are the signatures checked on mail-in ballots against the voter cards? Uh, Ms. Brazil? Um, yes, uh, there are a variety of, of uh, you know, sort of steps in the process. Actually, actually, let me know. This is about a question about mail-in voting, but that's not affected by, I believe, not not affected by this uh, this article, right? We're we're dealing with uh, early voting, not mail-in voting. Um, so, you know, qu questions about early voting, uh, as far as I can tell, are out of scope. I'm sorry about mail-in voting. Yeah. Okay. So, is there still going to be mail-in voting? I believe uh, Ms. Brussel said that it was independent of this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let's take uh, Mr. McCabe next. Name and precinct, please. And while we're waiting for Mr. McCabe, uh, I have been informed that the uh, uh, that the election modernization study committee ends automatically per prior town meeting vote. So there's no need to have a separate vote to dissolve it. Uh, so that should address Mr. Jamison's concern. Uh, is Mr. McCabe able to connect? I don't see Mr. McCabe in Zoom. I know. Um, oh, there. Uh, is that you, Mr. McCabe? You get me now? Yes, I can. Uh, get, okay. Name and precinct? Uh, Mark McCabe, precinct two. I stand to terminate debate on Article 25 and all matters before it. OK. So we have a motion to terminate debate. Uh, but given that there are no more speakers in the queue, um, I will not uh, entertain any seconds to that motion because we can just go straight to voting. So let's, uh, since we've exhausted the speaking queue, let's go straight to voting on the main motion of Article 25, Home Rule legislation uh, to uh, enable early voting. Uh, it's Home Rule legislation, so it's not automatic upon us voting for it. It still has to go uh, through a request to the legislate the, the you know, uh, uh, state legislature. Uh, to approve this type of change. Um, but this will initiate that process through home rule legislation. Uh, so if you're in favor of home rule legislation um, for in, uh, adopting early voting for town elections, you vote yes. And if you're against that change, uh, or if you're against that home rule legislation being filed, uh, vote no. So we, we did make a quick change uh, to some of the server settings, which should hopefully resolve some of the server errors that we were seeing earlier um, by just adding a few seconds to the waves of voting to space things out just a little bit. And hopefully that uh, addresses those, um, uh, those server, server connection errors that we were seeing earlier. Okay, so we have about 200 votes in. Things do seem to be running more smoothly. Uh, 
likely because of that change. Um, Okay, so if you are in favor of the main motion of Article 25 to introduce home rule legislation uh, for enabling early voting in any uh, regular or special town election, vote yes. If you're not in favor of introducing home rule legislation, vote no. Okay, we have two, 215 votes cast so far. Uh, we still have. Uh, uh, about 18 votes uh, from members who are recent or, or waiting on eight, uh, 18 votes from members who have been recently active in the portal. So we'll get a little bit more time. Uh, this is a majority vote. Uh, let's give um, another 20 seconds to get your vote in on the main motion of Article 25. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Five seconds until we close voting on Article 25. Okay, let's close voting. And Article 25 passes. Um, 214 votes. Uh, we'll leave up these screens until we've gone through all the precinct screens. Um, so we can show all the votes. 214 in the affirmative, four in the negative. Uh, this vote passes, or this, uh, this, this motion passes. Okay, so uh, Article 25, we've now disposed of that. We're now moving to Article 26, which is in front of us. And this is endorsement of the CDBG application. That's the Community Development Block Grant. And so uh, this, uh, let's bring up Mr. Diggins uh, as chair of the select board to uh, tell us about the recommended vote from the select board. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So did you notice? We feel so strongly about this article that you, that the unanimous vote isn't a typical five to zero, it's six to zero, but that's because the town manager gets a vote on this article as well. I hope that you read or will have the opportunity to read the report submitted by the Community Development Plot Grant Subcommittee, because in it, you will see a plethora of programs in the areas of public facilities and improvements, affordable housing, planning, and public services. They make 1.1 million go a long way, and hopefully in a short while, they'll get your yes vote on this article. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Diggins. And so the speaker queue is uh, now open for anyone who wishes to speak about, let's take Mr. Rosenthal. And while Mr. Rosenthal is coming up, we, we have no uh, amendments or substitute motions on this one. Um, my uh, Mark Rosenthal, Precinct 14, my apologies. I hit that by mistake. Okay, um, no worries. And so we have no one else in the speaking queue. And so if there are no speakers, uh, let's just go straight to voting on Article 26, the main motion. Okay, so we're now voting on the main motion of Article 26, endorsement of the Community Development Block Grant application, also known as CDBG. Um, and so this is about the endorsement of the CDBG application. Uh, annually, the select board applies for federal funds available to Arlington in the form of Community Development Block Grants, and the select board endorses this application. Uh, thanks again to Mr. Jameson for that uh, concise summary.
So if you are in favor of the select board's, select board's endorsement of the CDBG application, vote yes. If you are against it, uh, you can vote no. Okay, we have about 190 votes in. Two hundred votes. Okay, and this is a majority vote. Okay, we still have about twenty folks who've been recently active in the portal who have not voted yet. If you have not voted yet, like all all waves of precincts uh, should now have voting enabled. So please vote as soon as you can. Okay, I'll give folks another 30 seconds to get their votes, votes in. Seems like things are running smoothly I, um, with the server connections, 25 seconds. You can always put it into the Q&A if you're having trouble voting through the portal. 15 seconds until we close voting. 10 seconds until we close voting on Article 26. Five seconds until we close voting. All right, let's close voting. And the verdict is that Article 26, the main motion, passes. 220 votes in the affirmative, one vote in the negative. So let's uh, cycle through all the screens since this is a main motion. Which we'll do for main motions and subsidiary motions, but not votes to terminate debate. And then after we've cycled through all these precinct screens, we'll um, move on to Article 27, which is now before us. Article 27, which is revolving funds. And while we're bringing that up on screen, uh, let's bring up Mr. Diggins, chair of the select board, to tell us about the recommended vote of uh, Article 27's uh, uh, main motion. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Well, this one got me. Uh, cause this was pulled off the consent agenda. And there's just no way I can make this one interesting. So I'm just going to read a little bit from the expert excerpt of the, um, select board's report. Um, essentially the summary that you got represents the annual vote to receive reports on expenditures and receipts of the various town revolving funds and to authorize and reauthorize such funds in accordance with state laws, state law. These funds must be authorized annually in order to enable expenditures from them. So with that, hope that you'll vote positive action on this. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. And so yes, uh, this was on the consent agenda. It was removed, at least according to my records, by Mr. Warden. So can we bring up Mr. Warden? Um, and the only thing that I'll consider in scope to speak about at this point is a substitute motion or a brief explanation that there was some error in this, and then we can move on um, at that point. If there's, and if there's no substitute motion, we'll move straight to voting on the main motion. Because uh, since this, um, actually, this is not a, is this a no action? Let me just double check that. Maybe I'm jumping the gun here. No, this, this is a favorable action. I, I take that back. Uh, we do not require a substitute motion. Um, this is a favorable action, not a no action. Uh, so we do not require a substitute motion. Apologies for the confusion. Uh, Mr. Warden, did you want to speak to Article 27? Let's see. Uh, Mr. Warden, are you able to unmute your computer? Uh, 
Mr. Warden, I see that your that uh, speaking is uh, permitted uh, in Zoom. Um, for can your you account. hear me then? Yes, I can. I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, name of precinct, please. Uh, in John Warden, Precinct 8. Uh, Mr. Moderator and town meeting members, uh, I, I did not knowingly uh, take revolving funds off of the consent agenda. Another one of those uh, electronic glitches. Uh, okay. The meeting. okay. Well, thank you for the, uh, the brief explanation. And so uh, we do have a speaker in the speaker queue as well, um, uh, Mr. Kepline. Yes, Mark Kepline, Precinct 9. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. OK, thank you. Uh, how did town hall rentals lose so much money? Um, Mr. Chaplin, do you have an answer for that? Is this covered by re revolving funds? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chaplin, town manager. As we've still um, been struggling to come out of this pandemic, we haven't uh, over the past year really rented out town hall as much as we would have in the past but we still as we have in the past relied on that fund for paying certain expenses related to town hall i would expect in the coming year if we hopefully continue to you know try to find some way back to normal that we will begin uh having a heightened ability to rent uh rent uh, rent the hall out for various users thereby taking an income and balancing off the fund in future years uh, well, give me an idea what some of the expenses are for that forty thousand uh, dollars disappeared. Uh, Mr. Chaplain, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Adam Chaplain, Town Manager. So I'm looking at if you look actually on page A17 of the Select Board Report, there is a category uh, categorized listing of the expenditures in the Town Hall Rental Fund, and so you'll see supplies are two thousand seven hundred twenty-six dollars and forty cents. Personnel, which is related to the coordinator who manages the rentals, $2,875. Utilities, $6,068.39. And then the largest of the total, $17,207.44 for contracted services, which directs related, uh, excuse me, relax, uh, <laughs> relates directly, excuse me, uh, to the contract we have with the cleaning company that maintains Town Hall. Okay, so if it wasn't rented out, um, I don't know, does it need to be cleaned as often or coordinated as much? I, I whatever. Thank you. Um, is there a question there? I mean, there was a well, question. Well, yeah, I mean, what, how do you incur this these expenses when you're not renting out the hall? Um, uh, Mr. Chaplin? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Adam Chaplin, Town Manager. Uh, we have utilized again for, for years, these funds for the general maintenance, cleaning and utility costs associated with Town Hall. So this the, the cleaning costs are not directly associated with cleanup after events that did not occur, but rather the general cleaning and maintenance of the building. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just frustrated that the town didn't save any money while closed down during the pandemic and you know are still seeing uh repercussions so thank you all right thank you mr kepline let's take uh ms lacourt next annie lacourt precinct 15. um mr moderator through you i'd like to direct another question to the town manager uh, my understanding is that revolving funds are similar to enterprise funds. This is money in, money out from uh, financial activities related to whatever the revolving fund was developed for. So am I correct in that assumption? Uh, Mr. Let's direct that question to Mr. Chaplain. Is, is, that, is that a correct characterization? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chaplain, Town Manager. I generally, I'd say yes. These are programmatic accounts, programs that generate money and then have expenses related to the actual operation of that program. The only additional thing I would add is if there is a balance in the case similar to the prior speaker, you are able to spend that balance without incomes matching. You just have to make sure that you're not ever driving the fund into the red. Right. So you're, you can spend those monies on 
activities that are related to the ongoing purposes of the result, revolving fund, regardless of income, you can't spend money without from the revolving fund that isn't in the revolving fund, but none of the money in the revolving fund, for example, comes from tax dollars. Is that is that correct, uh, Mr. Chaplin? Adam Chaplin, town manager, yes, that is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Monterey. Thank you, Ms. LaCourte. Let's take uh, Mr. Leone next. Good evening, Ms. Moderate. I have the same question for Mr. Um, Chapdelaine regarding Sorry, name and precinct. Tom Leone Precinct 8. I have the same question for Mr. Chapdelaine regarding the um, life support and ambulance services. And that one we're out of whack by about $140,000. Um, if we keep that up, we'll run out of money in that fund within a year and a half. What's, what's going on with that fund? Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, what's going on with that? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chaplain, town manager. I suspect that that is in relation to the timing of billing around the closing of the fiscal year, as again, historically, receipts and expenditures from that fund have always been very close to one another. But Mr. Moderator, if uh, it so pleases you, I would ask if Deputy Town Manager Sandy Pooler might have a more detailed answer on that particular question. Sure, uh, Mr. Pooler, do you have a more detailed answer about the life support services fees? Uh, Sandy Pooler, Deputy Town Manager. Um, there, I think there are two things. One, I do believe that there was a decrease in some of the ambulance runs uh, during the COVID period. Um, people tended to use less medical services. Um, and um, so they called the ambulance less. Two, um, we are looking at the fee structure that we have for ambulance services. We haven't changed those fees in quite a number of years. Um, so I think it could be that uh, it's just not catching up with the ongoing expenses. And we are looking at that now. And seeking to get those uh, ambulance fees at a higher reimbursement rate from the insurance companies in the state. Uh, Mr. Puller. Yes. Yes. Essentially, the Sandy Puller, Deputy Town Manager, essentially, yes, what we would do is we would raise our uh, rates uh, in relation to a multiple of Medicare rates. It wouldn't change what we get for Medi from Medicare or Medicaid, but we would get more money from the private insurers. Thank you very much, Mr. Puller. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Leone. Let's take Mr. Jamison next. Thank you very much, Ms. Moderator Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, on, the, on the town hall um, revolving fund, um, perhaps Mr. Pooler can um, elucidate whether I've noticed in um, my um, now visits to the um, assessor's office uh, on a regular basis that the floor in town hall was replaced during the last year or so. Was that part of the cost um, used, those funds were used for? Mr. Puller, uh, were these funds used for uh, replacing the floor in town hall? Andy Puller, deputy town manager. That's an excellent question, but I don't know the answer. I believe those were capital funds, but I would have to check and look into that and report back. Um, I'm seeing a message from Mr. Feeney that is saying um, town hall renovation account. Um, so I don't believe it's a usage account. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. Okay, and, um, and, and, and to, to the members, um, Mr. Pooler has been very cooperative to my past requests to uh, elucidate um, more information about these funds over the years. And that's why um, in, in my, in my, from my perspective, um, there is now a, um, a, an appendix at the back of the um, select board report that elucidates the cash flows and as I recall, when um, Mr. Pooler completed that, they found that uh, including in the, um, uh, in particular, the largest one, which is the, uh, the ambulance one, which we accrue funds from uh, Armstrong and other related activities, um, that they learned a lot about um, different funds. And so um, I thank him for their work and, and that. And uh, as a side note, 
The Celtics are up 84-57 in the fourth. Thank you very okay. much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. That is out of scope, but let's take Ms. Malopchik. <laughs> we don't have an enforcement officer, so there's not much I could do about it. Ms. Malofchik? Beth Malofchik, Precinct 9. Uh, just before COVID, uh, I attended a select board uh, meeting. And so I'd like to know whether since then, and since everything had been closed, I haven't been to a select board meeting in person yet. Has the room and the entrance to the select board, I don't know if you call it the hearing room or the public room, but has that been made um, compliant? I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit. Uh, has it been made, was it ADA compliant? Was that your question? Yes, has it been made ADA compliant? Uh, let's ask, uh, let's see who, uh, I mean, is that covered in revolving funds? Um, well, it's gonna, uh, Mr. Pooler, is that something that would be covered in revolving funds to, to make that ADA compliant? Sandy Pooler, deputy town manager. Uh, no, generally ADA compliance is funded through the capital budget. Okay, so that would not be in scope. Um, Thank you. Apologies, Mr. Moderator. Great. Thank you, Ms. Milovchik. Let's take Ms. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Alice Nampi next. Hi, uh, Kirsten Allison Ampi, Precinct 13. I rise to terminate debate on this article in all matters before it. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to terminate debate. Uh, I will not entertain any seconds, seeing that there are no more speakers in the queue. So. Uh, I think we'll just leave it there and go straight to voting on the main motion of Article 27. Thank you, Dr. Allison Abbey. Okay, so we're now voting on the main motion of Article 27 uh, for revolving funds. If you are in favor of if you want to wish to approve revolving funds uh, as outlined uh, in the main motion for Article 27, vote yes. Uh, if you're opposed, you can vote no. The waves of uh, vote uh, voting by precinct uh, is still opening up at this point. Uh, if you're able to vote, uh, please vote. If you're still waiting for your precinct wave to open up, uh, please sit tight, it should open up momentarily. We're voting on the main motion for Article 27, revolving funds. Okay, we have 200 votes cast so far. We still have uh, nearly 30 members who have been recently active in the portal who have not voted yet. Uh, now it's uh, 22. Um, so please get your votes in. Um, once we've had enough votes come in, I'll close voting. Okay. Um, so let's uh, just give another. Uh, 30 seconds until we close voting on Article 27. Uh, 20 seconds until we close voting. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Five seconds until we close voting on Article 27, revolving funds. And let's close voting now. Okay, um, and our main motion of Article 27 passes. 216 votes in the affirmative, one in the negative. And we'll just leave these screens up. That is the seventh article that we have disposed of this evening, which um, we'll still wait for these screens, uh, the voting screens uh, to go by. 
Uh, but that actually that brings us now to uh, the tranche of zoning articles that that we have ahead of us. Um, seven articles in one evening, uh, other than the consent agenda, seven articles in one evening, evening is tied for the most articles we've disposed of in an, e an evening. Okay, so that's now, we now have article 28 before us. So let's bring that up. This is our uh, first zoning article. And so let's uh, bring up, um, Ms. Zembury from uh, the chair of the redevelopment board uh, to uh, tell us about the recommended vote from the ARB. Good evening, Article Mr. 20. Moderator. Uh, Rachel Zembury, chair of the redevelopment board. I'd like to request that the pre recorded video for Article 28 related to enhanced business districts. Hello, I'm ready. Great. Uh, so let's, let's play the video. Let's, looks like we already got that going. Let's bring that up. Hello, I'm Rachel Zimberry, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, also known as the ARB, and I will be taking you through Warren Article 28, a bylaw amendment related to enhanced business districts for the 2022 Annual Town Meeting. This amendment would apply to properties within the business, dis business zoning districts and proposals for new development or redevelopment. Existing commercial spaces with frontage exceeding the dimensional requirements are exempt. In enacting this additional requirement, this would be following local and regional precedent, including applying the expanded requirements described in the site standards section of the industrial zoning district amendments adopted by 2021 Arlington Town Meeting to business districts, complying with neighborhood-based recommendations from the Congress for New Urbanism, and following standards and examples from other inner core communities. The purpose of this amendment is to encourage pedestrian activity, maintain an active street, and encourage the development of active ground floor uses. This would apply to properties subject to review by the Redevelopment Board with reasonable exemptions, including those applications solely requesting signage approvals. The amendment provides minimum requirements for transparency of ground floor facades visible from the public way, prohibits blank facades in the public right of way by requiring articulation for a minimum of every 30 feet requires a clearly defined primary entrance that faces the principal street through an accessible surface to the public sidewalk, and requires that lobby entrances for upper story uses be clearly articulated and limited in scale to preserve floor space and facade frontage for active commercial ground floor uses. Through the proposed standards, this amendment will encourage vibrant usage and storefront design in Arlington's business districts. The ARB voted five to zero at our April 4th meeting to recommend favorable action on Article 28. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rachel Zember, Street Trees. Okay, um, we'll talk about the street trees another time. Um, anything else, Ms. Zember? No, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, so the speaking queue should now be open for anyone who wants to speak to, um, or is it uh, Article 28, uh, Zoning Bylaw Amendment, um, related to enhanced business districts. Do we have any speakers? Seeing none, let's go straight to voting on Article 28. The main motion, with, uh, we have a, before we do that, we have a point of order from Mr. Wagner. Let's take that up. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. I would point out, at least in my case, while you were speaking, uh, asking for people to vote, uh, to uh, raise their hands for speaking, there was no ability to do that. And I actually would like to speak on it. So I hope I might be allowed to speak on it before the vote begins. I also would ask that the technology not get ahead of the vote. Thank you. Uh, I think that is a fair request if voting was, because I can't see in, in my screen um, a button since uh, I don't have the, the, the view of a town meeting member. Um, uh, so let's close that. 
And uh, let's, since there's clearly an intention to speak, um, let, let us open up the, the speaking queue for that. Apologies, uh, I, I was under the impression that it was open uh, the entire time, but um, I, I clearly might've been mistaken there. Um, so apologies for that. Can we reopen the, the speaking queue? For Article 28. So someone in the Q&A is saying that they're still seeing the, the voting page and not an ability to speak. Yeah, maybe we need to reopen Article 28. Apologies for the technology issues. Okay, so let's take uh, Mr. Wagner from the speaking queue. Apologies again for that uh, confusion. Mr. Wagner, uh, name and precinct. Thank please. you, Mr. Moderator, Carl Wagner, Precinct 15. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can, go ahead. I, I just would point out as a point of order before I speak that I noticed the page refresh has gone to 21 seconds, which might be for technical database issues, but perhaps that's what the latency problem was. Um, I just wanted to very briefly say that I did review in its entirety Article 28, and I think this is, which was proposed by the planning department, is, is a good thing for us to go forward on, and we should vote yes on it. I hope you will. However, it points to a problem in uh, what we voted for in town meeting a few years ago, the uh, the mixed use law. We have not been able to create the vibrant business districts with accessory apartments that we hope for in the mixed use law. And I think this is a great start to fixing that. And I hope that town meeting in future years will find ways for existing mixed use uh, businesses to better meet our goals of the original vote we took several years ago. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Um, let's see, I see at least one report in the Q&A that someone doesn't uh, see a way to a raised hand feature for this article. I think that means a request to speak. Um, if anyone else wishes to speak, uh, now's your chance. Um, seeing none, and now that we have evidence that the speaking queue was actually open as, uh, oh, actually we, there, we have, uh, uh, let's take uh, Ms. Nathan. Oh, hello, Mr. Moderator, thank you. Um, no. Name in precinct, please. Oh, sorry, Michelle Nathan, precinct 11. Um, I don't want to take up a lot of time. I know you're trying to end the meeting on time. I just have no background on this. I read it also, um, but without background, it's hard for me to vote. If somebody could just briefly summarize uh, what the motivation was for this. Uh, yeah, Ms. Zenberry, can you give like perhaps like a 30 second or less summary. I know it's hard because there's a lot of technical detail to, the, to this. Can, can you do your best to give like a, like a, a very brief summary? Sure, Rachel Zemberry, chair of the redevelopment board. Um, the, the, the main purpose of this article is to um, encourage in mixed use developments, uh, more active uses. So restaurants, retail, um, services that encourage people to come in and out of uh, the first floor of multi-story buildings in town. It sounds like this is like, a, like a, 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 a new kind of classification of kinds or category or, um, or something of this enhanced business district to get at those particular types of uses of businesses. Is that accurate? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's new. I think it's encouraging um, just a more robust use of those particular types of businesses within the first floor, um, the street level of, of those um, spaces. It's something that the redevelopment board has tried to do in practice, but there's nothing specific as of yet in the zoning bylaw, which we can point to. So this allows us to be able to point to that in the zoning bylaw. To these specific uses. Yes, that is correct. 
Anything else, Ms. Nathan? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let, let's take Mr. Jameson next. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. I'm in favor of this article and I point Mr. Wagner to Article 39, where I hope he'll join me in voting in the affirmative to help um, enhance our mixed use zoning, uh, in for, um, not enforcement, but activation for the things that uh, were discussed just recently for uh, a more vibrant, a lower level commercial with uh, apartments above it along our um, business quarters. Thank you very much, Ms. Moderator. Right, let's keep the discussion to, to this article. And um, I, I hope that wasn't an intention to have Mr. Wagner vote for something that to trade votes or something. I don't think that's what you were trying to do, but let's just be careful with that. Let's uh, um, so let's take uh, Ms. Stamps. Uh, I don't think we've heard from her in some time. Name and precinct, please. Hi, Mr. Moderator, Susan Stamps, Precinct 3. Um, um, reading the warrant article here for this particular article, it says um, that the, I'm so sorry, um, that the seat of the, uh, the town wants to vote the, uh, amend the zoning bylaw to encourage pedestrian activity, et cetera and limit the amount of ground floor retail space occupied by banks, offices, lobbies, and other non-active uses when feasible. And I was just wondering if Ms. Zemberry might be able to point to the language in the um, proposed um, zoning amendments that would limit the amount of space taken up by banks and such. Okay, uh, Ms. Zemberry? Rachel Zamberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. Uh, the Redevelopment Board discussed how specific to um, how specific we wanted to be in the wording of, of the definition of active uses. Rather than specifically call out banks or offices, in, uh, instead we settled on the wording that is included in the um, in the section. Um, that is specific to maintaining an active street and active ground floor uses. There are times in which banks and other service uh, oriented retail can be considered active. And uh, again, um, the redevelopment board wanted to be able to encourage as wide a variety of usage as possible. Thank you. Yep. Ms. Stamps. Um, I, I still don't understand how this proposed language answers, uh, speaks to that question. Can you point to me something specifically in this language which does what, what, you, what you still said? Uh, Ms. Ember, um, is this under 5.5.2b uh, subsection Correct. one? Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. 5.5.2b section one refers to active uses. Thank you. Maybe the question is, I think, if I can kind of interpret what Ms. Stamps is saying, is uh, in what, like, how does it encourage or discourage one use or another, as opposed, as opposed to just saying that it encourages or discourages? Is, is that the question, Ms. Stamps? Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ms. Zember? Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board. There are several ways in which it encourages active use. Um, so under standard section four, there are several um, several ways that the uh, that the building, not only in its usage but also in the way that it's designed, can enhance these business districts. So it includes several design principles, the including the um, the the limiting of the size and scale of lobby entrances and the articulation of storefronts in order to uh, continue to encourage active storefront usage. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, it, we are coming up on 11 p.m. Um, um, let's see. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Poskett? Yes, uh, <clears throat> I move we adjourn. Okay, before we uh, head, head into, head down that path, uh, are there any notices of reconsideration that anyone wishes to give on any of the articles 
uh, that we voted on tonight. Um, the caveat that you need to be on the prevailing side of that vote in order to give notice of reconsideration. Um, uh, so let's enable raise hands in Zoom uh, for anyone who wants to give give notice of reconsideration, which means that would get, that gives you the right. This is your this is your last chance to have the right to later on move to reconsider at a future meeting um, a, a, a motion that we voted on tonight that you were on the prevailing side of. If there's new information or you want more time to reflect, now is the time. Um, seeing no notices of reconsideration, uh, I will now entertain uh, Mr. Foskett's uh, motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Are there really no seconds? Um, Okay, we have a second from uh, Ms. Phelan, uh, the second to Mr. Foskett's motion to adjourn. Uh, let's keep raise hands enabled in Zoom. Uh, if, you're, if you object to raise uh, to um, uh, adjourning, uh, you can raise hand in Zoom right now. Uh, I see two votes uh, and that's not gonna do it. So I declare that a majority vote. Uh, in favor of adjourning. Uh, so this meeting is adjourned and we will come back on Wednesday, May 25th at 8 p.m. Thanks everyone, have a good night.